The GTR, one of Japan's most famous supercars to come out of Nissan, is definitely one that everybody seems to like and love. And there's a whole lot of things about this car that make it very, very unique and very difficult to work on sometimes. One of those things being the introduction of very lightweight components, more specifically, this aluminum trunk lid. So when we're getting ready for the show here and have to do a complete spoiler swap on it, the original holes have to go. And since this is only aluminum, very lightweight, it's very, very thin aluminum, but we gotta weld those holes shut. So here's some really cool tips on getting these holes welded up, more specifically welding ridiculously thin aluminum. It's only today on the Fabrication Series. Preparation is key to ensure that we get cooperation with this metal because this trunk is so thin it's going to want to warp, distort, of course the grade of aluminum that you use is usually not top of the line. All it really has to be is just aluminum. So aside from actually removing the paint around the holes, I'm going to take this little deburr tool and I'm going to scrape the inside of the holes. What this is going to do is clean out all the paint and all kinds of other junk that's inside of those holes. Next I'm going to take a rag with some acetone. We're going to make sure that this aluminum that we're going to weld on is nice and clean. Now it's pretty much ready to weld. Now I'm going to do the other holes and everything on the other side and then we're going to get all of this going. So let's get this done and I'll get ready to weld. Now that trunk is really, really thin. So what we're going to have to do, I, I don't have any accessibility behind it to actually get a chill block or any kind of backing metal into it. So what I'm going to have to do is kind of freehand this one and I'm going to weld around the hole. So I need enough amperage to get that metal heated up quickly and get a rod filled into it and penetrate fast, but not too much heat to where it's gonna blow that hole wide open as soon as I hit it with the arc. So I'm gonna start around 40 amps. Now on top of that, I've also outfitted my 9F torch head here with a 1 16th inch uh, tungsten and I'm using 1 16th inch filler rod. This should be enough to actually fill and build it up as quick as possible around the edge of that hole. So let's start there and see how well we do. <laughs> Now there's almost no getting around the fact that this metal is going to warp, but the best thing that you can do to start out with is I'm building up an edge around the hole, so that way I can cut a slug, get one inside of there to actually patch it up, and we have enough metal that we can actually heat up and work with to actually try and get it on there, so that way the hole doesn't go burning away. But to minimize the amount of warping, as soon as I get one of these holes done, I'm going to put everything down, and I'm gonna wait a good 10 or 15 minutes before I go attacking any of these other holes. It's gonna take forever, yes, but we don't want this thing to get all wavy and crazy on it, so you have to be patient. So we're gonna build up the edges on all of these, and then we'll get to filling them in after we let all of them cool off every single time. One thing you really need to remember here is no messing around. Absolutely no messing around. Get your metal hot, get your rod in there, get it filled and built, and get out. Move on, quick, fast, move it. Build it up, get that metal around that edge. Otherwise, that hole's gonna blow away, and you're gonna be left sitting there trying to fill it all back in, which is very, very difficult to do. So, no messing around. Get that metal in there, get out, move on. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where the hole is starting to blow out or you're way, way too much amperage is going in there and you're losing control of your puddle, just stop, wait a little bit, and then go back and try it again. Be patient. Okay, so with all the edges around all of these holes, it's already built up and ready to weld. So we're going to take a bit of uh, 0 0.63 inch aluminum, which uh, just coming from a sheet of scrap that I have laying around here. Now, using it slightly thicker will give us more time. And the time it takes to actually heat these both pieces up and actually get a good dab in there to hold it in place is exactly what we want, which is why we build up the edges. Because then it's also thick enough that we can take all of this metal back down, make it nice and smooth and clean, and you'll never even know that the hole was there. So that's why I'm using it slightly thicker. So we'll just grab our snips here, get strong, grab a little uh, piece, just a small, nothing big, just a you know little uh, tiny little section cut out there. 
Now, if you had the accessibility to get behind there and hold it up, you could just trace out the circle and go from there, but you don't necessarily have that. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of trace out just a rough sketch of about where I need to cut. And we'll just take our snips, start slicing that design out of here. Now it's gonna take a little bit of patience and whatnot, but we'll get it, no worries. Get it all cut out, and then we'll get it to lay down on there. Now let's cover real quick what we do and do not want. What we do want is this slug to actually fit inside of the hole, but not go through the hole. So I'm gonna set this up, kind of line it up, figure out exactly where it fits nicely. And this is very, very small, so I can't get the camera in quite like I'd like to show you, but we want it to kind of just kind of sit right in between there. Just enough to where it snaps itself kind of, kind of in there and doesn't move. I think I've got it pretty close, right about there. Now I'm gonna throw a weld down on there. Now the shape of this is kind of funky and it does sit on top of that buildup, which is okay because that's gonna ensure it doesn't fall through. But what I'm gonna do is when I get a good solid tack weld on there, I'm gonna be able to actually manipulate and change that hole up a little bit using the torch here to kind of heat it up and change it. So what I'm gonna do to make sure that I get a good tack on it initially is to start toward the outside of that buildup and then just kind of get it nice and warm and just to the point where it's about ready to start melting, and I'm gonna smash in that rod there and see if I can get it to grab. Of course, it's not pretty, but it gives me room to maneuver here. this portion of it lined up right where I need it to so it's actually down inside and flush with that hole. And I'm going to weld that section. This is going to ensure that it doesn't actually fall in there. I'm going to keep on pushing that metal down inside of there so we can fill it all in. Now, the smaller holes were not necessarily easy, but at the same time, uh, we're not going to be able to use a piece of 063 to actually fill in uh, on these larger ones. It's going to get too hot and it's going to fall through. So there is a trick to cutting out a larger or filling in a larger hole by using thicker metal. So we're going to jump on the drill real quick and I'm going to show you how to do that. We get a nice perfect slug here. So what this is going to do is allow us to fill it in. Now I've used much thicker metal on this one. This is actually a 120 uh, or an eighth inch thick piece of aluminum with these little tabs here on the side of this little skin of what doesn't actually get machined out of there is going to hold it inside of that hole. I'm going to take the carbide on the end of the drill here and I'm going to clean this hole up and make it just a little bit more uniform. that speed with that kind of aggressive type of uh, bit on the end of the drill it really doesn't take much to get it to hold out in there so what I'm going to do is place this inside of the hole nice and neat like and I'm letting these uh, little extra piece of slag here that doesn't get machined off that's going to sit it flush inside of there now I can heat the crap out of this slug in the center here and make sure that we blend and fill it in nicely to get that perfect uh, that perfect fitment and nice and flush and neat and we also have lots to take off of here in case we got too much so now the slug is in here let's start let's weld that one up Now the idea here is to get a lot of that aluminum to flow and fill in that gap so that way when we start taking down and grinding on this and getting some of that metal to come down there, it'll fill in just right where it needs to be. But what I'm going to do here is take the hammer and let's see if I can get it to fit just a little bit more flush in there. I want it a little bit deeper into that hole. Now we've got a firm tack in place here, we can do this. We start knocking it around. And sure it sits right where it needs to. So I'm going to toss a tack on the other side here. Now we're going to repeat the same process for this hole. And 
And there we go. We'll get this welded up. All right, so all of this is very heavily blended and filled in here. And what I've done is concentrated most of the heat on the slug itself because it's much thicker than the trunk. So what that allows it to do is kind of melt back and, build, and uh, heat up and kind of push back a little bit, which opens up the gap. And when you open up the gap, you can fill it back in with the rod. So when we take all of this down nice and flush and smooth, there will still be a lot of metal to hold it all in there. That was the purpose of the edge buildup and the thick slug in the middle for these larger holes. So now we're going to grind it all down and make it nice and smooth and make sure that everything's good on this one part here. Now, as I always say, when it comes to the flap disc, let the flap disc do all the work, not your muscles. Because if you heat the crap out of this, all the friction from the flap disc could make it warp again. So we're going nice and easy until it's flush and smooth. Remember, the body filler will take care of the rest of all of this. So let's get this last hole here. Get that set up, and this side is pretty much finished. It's going to warp, so we're going to let it cool down a little bit before we go attacking this side. Let it unwarp itself, because if it pulls up, it's going to pull itself back down once it cools and it shouldn't be warped. So we're going to let it cool for just a minute, and then we'll do this side and get the rest of this. Alright, now that was just a final grinding to make sure that we're nice and smooth here and we're pretty much level. So remember, the low spots can be filled in with the, with the filler itself and whatnot, but this the warpage wasn't too bad on this side, it really was okay, so I mean it can still be worked a little bit with the dolly and once it cools down it'll actually settle itself back in, so we're not really too worried about that. So pretty much that about wraps up this side, so what I'm going to do is go over and get back onto the other side there. So that about wraps it up as far as uh, welding really thin aluminum goes. Now there's a couple of things that I'd definitely like to address on this video in uh, response to a lot of other methods that were suggested. One of those being the use of chill blocks or backing metal underneath the hole. Yes, chill blocks are fantastic for doing holes or very large holes where you have to rapidly fill it in there and not have it distort and warp on you. But in this instance, there was no accessibility. There is no way to actually stick a chill block or any kind of backing metal up to the back side of those holes, which is also why the slug was introduced from the top of the hole instead of from behind the hole. That's one of those big reasons why. Yes, you can use them, but on this instance, we could not, so this is a different method that I had to use in order to actually achieve the same result. Now, the other thing, time. Consider this. A lot of people were suggesting to rapidly cool the metal after welding it. Now, after welding it, it's going to start warping, it's going to start pushing and distorting upward or downward in some instances. In this case, it went upward. So the rapidly cooling it would force it to go down as fast as possible and it might actually stay stuck in a warped position. If you allow it to cool naturally, it's going to stay down and actually be there where it's supposed to be. That's just the way that it works. So consider this, if you were trying to rush a job like this where you only have one shot to get it right, such as this build, a new replacement lid from Nissan costs $2,517. That is one of those things that you want to try to avoid as far as the expense is concerned because if you spend $2,517 for a replacement lid, you still have to do the same job or you still have to go back over it again, but now you're minus $2,517 and the labor on top of everything else. So consider that one. Allow the metal to cool, allow it to do what it does naturally, and then go back over and finish the job off of there. So that's all I have for this episode, and I want to thank you guys for watching. If you need to get in touch with me, check out uh, facebook.com slash fabricator series. Head over to the fabricationseries.com website, drop me an email. You can drop me a comment below or even follow along on Instagram at the.fabricator. Now check the description here. I'll have all that information up for you. Thanks again, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.